We mentioned that here at IRBC, we allow for questions following the service. Who has the first question, but we'll settle or comment. Um, this past week, somebody that I was speaking to on Facebook, a, a young gentleman that I know, posted a video that said, are we really born gay? Um, he's just come to Christ. And in the discussion that came following the video with a lot of his friends who are not Christians, um, I said, you know, we're all born with a sin nature, and that's why we need to turn to Christ and repent. He gave the gospel. My friend then came back to me, again, he's a new Christian, and he said, I don't think you're helping anyone, so I deleted your comment. What is your response to Christians who think that the cross is foolish to share? Because I can talk all day to someone who doesn't believe in Christ and says it's foolish, but someone who does believe in Christ and says it's foolish, how do you respond to that? Just this week, I had a chance to speak with someone who um, that's, that's how I can say this, encapsulate all of this. Um, I'm, I'm working with a group of folks who want to put together a small Christian group. Uh, let's just say it that way. And um, our big problem is, at this point, what is a Christian group? What do Christians believe? Let me ask a question. Let me ask for a raise of hands. How many people right here now know somebody who would say, you know what? Um, hey, you know, we're going to put together a Bible study, and if a gay Christian wants to come along, he's, he's welcome, no problem. Or a gay Christian wants to come to church, you're welcome. They, they can be Christian be gay. It's all right. How many, how many people, folks right now, I want to see a raise hands of no folks that would say that right now? Pretty much everyone, isn't it? Um, and I challenged this person. He wasn't saying it quite like that, but he was, he was very, very close. And I challenged him and said, well, what do, you, what do you really believe? He said, and this is what he said. He said this. He said, well, you believe something, but other people believe something else. Okay, now, now, now this is where we as believers need to be need to sharpen up a little bit. Because what's happening right now is the perspicuity of scriptures is, is, is being attacked. Now, raise your hand if I just lost you. Thanks, the perspicuity. <laughs> <laughs> so glad I came to church today to find that one out. Um, but Perspicuity is, is a word that has to do with clarity. Okay? And what's happening is this. We're still okay with signing our doctoral statement saying that all scriptures give by inspiration. It's, it's inspired. Uh, our new thing is now inspired in the original autographs, blah, blah, blah. That's our new thing. We used to have statements that God preserved his word. We've given those up for the most part. Now it's the original autographs. All right, good. And so the original autographs is fine. Okay, good. And so we can sign this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's all inspired. But what's being attacked right now, this is, I think, under attack far more than the actual, actual authority of Scripture in an abstract sense. The perspicuity or the clarity of Scripture is being attacked. And what people are saying is, yes, we know what the Bible says, but everybody has a different interpretation. And what they're really saying is, yeah, the words really are inspired. But God didn't inspire his book, but it's not understandable. It really doesn't say anything. I'm going to ask for a raise of hands again. Any of you had a conversation like that with anybody recently? Yes, yeah, some of you have. Yes. Yeah, okay, yes, the Bible says, but you know what? We, we really don't know what it says. Yes, yeah, 66 books, but who even knows? <laughs> it's, it's, everybody has a different interpretation, so just believe whatever you want. That's what's under attack, I would argue, more than the actual authority of Scripture in a, in a shall we say, in a, in, a, in a general sense. And that's what you're running into. And I am not willing to... Uh, ultimately, I think we have to take all this type of thing to 1 John. Because 1 John is the book that lays out the tests. And uh, my friend and I might have a chance to do 1 John uh, one of these days, a friend that I was talking to. Because this, this my friend was saying, hey, you know, just everybody comes in. Let's just everybody. Come again, everybody's a Christian. All they have to do is say they're a Christian. Uh, 
That might work out until you get 1 John. Because you read 1 John, John is not opening the door to everybody. He's opening the door, but they're not coming in. They're uh, kind of going out. If you read that in 1 John. I think that's where we need to that's that's where we need to go. Who else has a question? Yes. I'm kind of piggybacking here because of on that same thing where the um, street preacher really pursued the atheist. At what point does casting your pearls before swine come into play? It, and I, I yeah. recognize he had an audience. Yeah, exactly. Let, let's talk about that a little bit because that is a that's an important, obviously an important passage there in Matthew seven. Do not cast your pearl before swine, lest they trample them underfoot. And then the second part, which is, of course, don't give what is holy to the dogs, lest they turn on you and trample you underfoot. And um, that that teaching obviously comes from Christ, so we look to him for that example. And I think what he's talking about there is what he did later on in, in actually in Matthew 12, 13, because there, there came a time when he, when he um, simply exposed them and no longer tried to convince them. And I think that's what that's talking about there. And in that, in, in that um, exchange that I saw with, with Tony Miano there versus Ted the Atheist, that's, that's pretty much the way I saw it. Because Ted the Atheist is not going to, I mean, boring it. Absolute flat out miracle. Fall on his knees and acknowledge Christ right there. And Tony knows that. But he knows, like you said, he has an audience that he, that he wouldn't have unless, unless he did that. And the, the, the key I think that we miss about that, that passage, don't cast your pearl before swine, don't give what is holy to the dogs, is, is, is what happens at the end of that, especially where he says, lest they turn you and, 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 and trample you under the well basically tear you, tear you apart. You don't want to give anybody anything that they're going to use against you later on. I think that's what he's talking about right there. And there were things that Christ wouldn't tell him. And, and you know, I, I have not fully explored Christ's use of, use of parables like, like I need to. I, I, I haven't done it. Because Christ very clearly said something that we just would hardly accept even in our Christian circles today. And Christ said, the reason why I'm doing these, I'm sharing these parables is to hide the truth from those who don't believe. I am actively hiding it. I need to learn more about that myself. M I A N O. I just want to say this because I think it'd be really helpful. But a lot of a lot of the stuff that you were preaching on. A ton of it was just repetition of the Old Testament in that passage, and I, I just, I just, I, I'm, I looked it up, and 33 percent of the entire New Testament is the Old Testament, referencing the Old Testament. So I, I think it's really helpful in case you come across people that just the Old Testament is, is, is moot, you know. You can tell them, well, you need to disregard 33% of the New Testament then. But because I, I, some of those verses you said in there, I didn't even know were in the Old Testament. I didn't even know when we went back to Isaiah, I didn't know that was in Isaiah. You know? That's, that's crazy. Could you settle the, you, know, you bring your comment in for a landing there a little bit better? This is crazy. <laughs> crazy awesome. But it is, it, but it is crazy. Yeah. It, it is. Um, and I learned, I was in a Bible college where I, was, I learned the Old Testament is irrelevant. That was taught to me. Right, dear? You and I went to the same Bible college, and we were taught that. Irrelevant. It's all about the new. Wow. That, that is definitely news to the New Testament writers. That would, be, that would be an interesting concept for them. Maybe we could educate them. Wow. Who else has a question? It's time for one more. Yeah, so. What do you see as the parallel between what you're talking about today in 1 Corinthians and Paul in 2 Corinthians 5, 
13 basically kind of says the same thing. Hey, if we seem insane, it's because of God. And if we make sense to you, well, that's because God's revealing it to you that it makes sense. Do you see that as a parallel you know, passage, or how do you see that? You know, sometimes Seth, I get worried when you ask a question, it's kind of hard, but sometimes you really have to toss up some softballs. <laughs> Try. <laughs> Thanks a lot. You know, it, it, it goes that same thing where who, who, do we want, who do we want to be accepted by? Um, and, and, and Paul, later on in 1 Corinthians, it says, you know, it's a small thing to be judged by you. You know, you guys, you guys think there's something wrong with me. Do you know how important it is to me to be accepted by you? It just doesn't even matter. And I would hope, Seth, I would hope for all of us, how could it be if we lived our lives so that we would please Christ and we just didn't care if we pleased those who hate Christ? We do want to please those who love Christ. Our brothers and sisters in Christ, that's all throughout the scriptures. We do want to do that. But how often do we want to be thought of as smart and intelligent to people who hate Christ? And for Paul, it was just not even on the radar screen. And for those who question his revelation from God, that was the same thing, really. And that's what we see there in 2 Corinthians. Do you question me on this? Do I seem crazy? Well, you know what I got from God, so uh, you better think about it. Do we have another question from another young man here? Okay. 